Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Philips Essential Air Fryer Model HD9200. And as usual, let's start with the unboxing. As you can see, the box arrived safe without any damages. It's also covered in a plastic shrink wrap that has this product sticker on it, so make sure to cut it out from the packaging before throwing it away because this includes some unique information about your item. First thing we see in the box is a bunch of paperworks. And finally, we have the air fryer out. Let's quickly take a look at these papers. So first we have an illustrated guide that pretty much shows you how to use the product already. The full user manual can be downloaded from the Philips website as it's not part of the package. Next, we have the warranty certificate. And then finally, we have this multi-language information guide that I never really read so let's just fold it back again. Some basic specs about this air fryer. It stands at around 30 cm and is around 36 cm wide. As you can see, it can sit comfortably on top of our single plate induction cooker. It weighs 4.5 kilograms, basket capacity is at 0.8 kilograms, and the pan can hold 4.1 liters. And it comes with a three-prong cord that's 80 cm long. Top surface is flat, basic cooking settings are printed as well, and there's also some kind of a gutter around the top part which acts as the air intake. Here we have the timer knob in minutes and the temperature knob in Celsius. You can pull out the basket like this, and you can take off the pan by pushing the basket release button this way. Unlike most air fryers, the bottom of the basket is different. It has a unique starfish design, effectively employing rapid air technology that swirls hot air around so that food is cooked fast and even. That's according to the leaflet. Let's take a look inside. So there's the heating element, the fan, and a glimpse of the air outlet. Before you turn it on, make sure to plug it in first. Whenever I use this, I start by setting the temperature first and then the timer. And since this is a manual appliance, it's hard to get the time accurate down to the second, so I use it along with the timer on my phone to get a more accurate countdown. Power indicator turns on once the timer is set and when the basket is closed firmly. As you notice, the light indicator turned off when the basket was pulled out, but note that it doesn't pause the timer, so if you listen closely, you can hear it ticking. Once it starts heating up, you can feel hot air getting expelled from the air outlet behind. This is a good time to turn on your range hood, and as a safety precaution, don't back it up too close to the wall, give it some clearance and don't place it near stuff that could get damaged by heat. The body of the air fryer gets warm as you cook with it, but it doesn't get too hot that it hurts. When cooking time has elapsed, you'll hear a timer bell. Now to my favorite part. The first thing I made with this air fryer is a Basque burnt cheesecake which is all the hype this time and I love cheesecake so I knew I had to try it. I also tried my hand at cooking steak and potatoes and they came out perfect. Air fryer recipes are abundant online. I personally get mine from a local Facebook group by just doing a quick search and checking out the results. Thankfully, I got in the air fryer game a bit late, so I get the benefit of having so many resources readily available. Now to my least favorite part. Nine months in of regular use and while I love it very much, I have to say that it's a real pain to clean. The basket and the inner pan, while big, is manageable even with our small sink and dish rack. I usually soak it first with soapy water to soften the burnt stuff and the grease, and then after a while I wash it off using a non-abrasive sponge. 
Cleaning the inside is a different story though. Here's how it looks like after a couple of weeks of daily use, mostly frying. There are oil splashes everywhere and this is a challenge to clean because of the coil and the fan that's very hard to reach. It's a struggle anyone who owns an air fryer can attest to, which is why it's important to clean it regularly to prevent stuff like this from hardening, making it more difficult to maintain. There's no easy way to do this, but thankfully, because the top is flat, we can set it upside down to get better access to the area that we're gonna clean. From the manual, it says you can use a brush to remove some dirt that's stuck on this part, but you can also wipe it clean using a wet wipe. Here, I'm just gonna spray it with green and wipe it off to the best of my ability. You can also make a homemade cleaning solution using baking soda and vinegar and use a toothbrush to scrub out the buildup. Don't forget to clean the air intake as well because this indent is also prone to getting dirt stuck in it. This part is not removable by the way. And of course, don't forget to wipe the base and the sides as well. When it comes to cleaning the inside of the air fryer, don't wait too long because it gets more difficult to clean the longer you leave it dirty. Now let's look at the different accessories you may or may not need. To be honest, you don't really need a lot of extras for this, but I got excited and bought a whole set of accessories only to dispose more than half of it. If you come across this 9-piece set, I'm telling you more than half of this is useless so don't even bother. For instance, this skewer rack is too small. If I'm doing kebab, I ditch the rack and use barbecue sticks instead to better manage the space. You also don't need this griller thing because you can just place the food straight on the pan. And this bread holder, totally useless because when you put the bread upright like that, it's too tall, it won't fit the basket. In the end, I only kept 3 cooking pans and a silicone brush. I kept the cupcake mold even though it's too small. It's barely cupcake size so I don't really use it but it might be useful some days so I'm gonna keep it. My suggestion is you don't have to buy anything. If you have a borosilicate glass container like this, you can use this for baking, of course without the plastic cover. The nettes like this work as well, so do tin cans. As you've seen, I've baked a cheesecake in one. Here's another thing I bought that I don't really use much. It's a reusable silicone liner that's supposed to protect your pan from stuck on food, but it doesn't really help because the pan is already non-stick and the juices from the meat, which usually burns and sticks, still find its way to the pan. Plus, it's just an additional item to wash, so I don't really recommend it. If there's one important accessory that I want to have for my air fryer, that would be an oil splash guard because it would help minimize the dirty splatters on the fan and the heating coil that's very hard to clean. Unfortunately, nothing fits this air fryer because everything out there is round. So I made my own by removing the rim and cutting around the side so it fits my pan. Sadly, I couldn't seal the edges so the sides are pretty sharp and have a tendency to scratch the walls. Hopefully I find something that works. Or if you have any idea on how to put a protective rim around this, that would be great. Now let's talk about the price and where you can purchase one. I bought this air fryer from the Philips flagship store on Las Mall for around 6,000 pesos. They ship fast and if you plan your purchase, you can get great deals and lots of discounts. I must admit, this isn't the cheapest out there. You can get a similar sized air fryer for half the price but I went with Philips because it's a familiar name when it comes to kitchen appliances so I know quality is good. I must warn you though, if you buy here, you have to request for the official receipt separately because it doesn't come with the package. They have a form for it and you have to fill it out completely and wait patiently for it. It took me two months to get my official receipt and in my frustration I had to include DTI in my emails because they don't respond properly, so that sucks. But besides that, it's all good. Finally, I'm very pleased with this purchase despite it being on the more expensive side when it comes to air fryers this size. Because again, I'm paying for the build quality and customer support and I'm pretty confident with Philips as a brand. And hopefully, I won't have to reach out for them for any issues. My only complaint is the effort it takes to clean it, but it's easily trumped by how it's made cooking very convenient for me. I can fry healthily because the oil just drips down to the bottom of the basket, and I don't have to keep watching the stove like I used to in case something sticks and burns on the pan. With an air fryer, I can just put the meat in, set the timer, and get back to work. And when the time's up, I'll just flip it quickly and set the timer again. I can roast, I can bake, and I can finally stop preheating bread on the microwave. That said, it has been very useful for us. Should I have bought a digital one instead? Not at all because I only needed a timer for accuracy and my phone already does that for me. And the deviance in temperature is not much of a big deal since I can simply adjust the cook time. 
Plus, manual components are easier to repair if it ever gets to that point, so that's also a consideration. So yeah, I just needed a basic air fryer and this works. How big is it really? We're a household of two and even though it says it can cook four portions, I still think it's only good for two people. I would cap the portions to three if you are to cook three servings, more than that you'd end up crowding the basket, in which case you're better off with a bigger air fryer. What else can I say? In the almost 9 months that I've been using this, I'm pleased to say I have no regrets and would highly recommend this to anyone, especially if you like frying food like we do and have limited space in the kitchen. If you can get this from a physical store, much better. I guess that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and maybe subscribe if you found this helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to jump in the comment section below. Check out the description box for more details and watch out for a written review of this in my blog. Thanks for watching and stay safe.